Hello all and welcome to another smart service tutorial. This is Nori from My Service Depot and today we'll be discussing the new time tracking features added in version 99 of smart service. We'll be focusing primarily on how these new features will improve your process for those of you using the software previous to version 99. For general information about time tracking or to set up time tracking for the first time, you may click the link on your screen or in the video description. To follow these new features in the order that they will be used, we'll start off with a job that has been dispatched to iFleet. On the left will be an iOS device, and on the right will be an Android. You'll notice that when I clock in on my devices, you will no longer receive a prompt to confirm that you would like to clock in, which will eliminate a step from your process. Also, from this point onward, Smart Service and iFleet can support multiple clock-in and clock-out times per device. In the event that the iFleet user has a job open when they try to clock out for the day, iFleet will notify them and ask if they would like to finalize the service before clocking out. Once we open this job, we can still enter travel and production times as normal. For those of you using the additional times feature from the field, your process is improved. When entering additional times, you'll notice that when an employee is chosen, the default values for payroll and service items are filled out according to that employee's profile in Smart Service. The only thing your field technician needs to do is select the additional times that the user was working. Changing the type of time will also load the defaults associated with that action. We can now save our additional times on this job as normal. Another great feature added in iFleet is the ability to use employee times to create billable items. In order to use this feature from the field, the iFleet user will need to have added timestamps during their service. Instead of using the finalize feature at the bottom, we will instead move back to the timestamps and choose the complete job option. This would be the option you have never used as the finalize job button would add this for you. Since we need an end time on our job, but we want to add time charges now, we'll go ahead and complete the job using this option here and finalize later. Down in the job items section, we will have the new add time charges feature, which you will also see later back in smart service. Using this option, we'll add all timestamps on this tablet for this job as billable items using the service item associated with those times. Pressing this option will bring up the following menu where we can use the check marks to the left to select which times should be marked as billable. Any times which do not have a service item assigned will display a message in red. The Combine by Service Item feature in the bottom left is selected by default. With this option, times with the same service item regardless of technician will be combined into a single line item. With this option off, it will produce a separate line item for each time entry. Tap the Done button when finished to commit your times to the Job Items section, and if no modifications need to be made to these items past this point, you may continue on to the Finalize as normal. Let's head back over to the office and see what's next. Our next feature will take us into the Job Items section of our service back in the office. We can view and manage times made billable through iFleet from this screen as well. Click the Add button at the top left of this window and select the Add Time Charges option from the list. This section will mirror the feature we had just used in iFleet. This way, your office staff can control billable items instead of the field user. In this scenario, I have already added my times to the service in iFleet, and if I attempt to do that now from the office without removing the items and marking them as unbilled, Smart Service will alert me that these items have already been marked as billable and added to the service. You may erase them entirely or make adjustments to the existing items from there. To review and post times to the QuickBooks timesheet for job costing and payroll purposes, the previous Manually Post Timesheets screen has been redesigned to Post Timesheets. This option is available from the Office tab where you would find the previous timesheet screen. As usual, you may filter by employee or display times for all employees. A new option to group times either by the employee or the job has also been added. Grouping by the job will be especially useful when viewing times for larger projects with multiple iFleet users. More convenient filter options have been added to allow you to quickly select a date range such as last week, but you may also choose a custom date range and use the date pickers to the right to define that range. By default, all of the times displayed will be for finalized services only. If you would like to see times for services that have not yet been or in the process of being finalized, an option for include incomplete jobs has been added at the top of the screen. 
This will be a useful option to toggle when you need to correct timestamps or look at jobs which may be missing timestamps, so you can post them over to QuickBooks. Another improvement for those posting times is that the scheduled times are no longer displayed or posted to QuickBooks if actual times are missing from the field. If some of the times on our screen need to be adjusted before they are sent over to QuickBooks, you can edit any of these times by clicking the pencil symbol on the far right. This Time Entries by Employee or Job window will display all times for that date range that are related to the service or employee you chose to group by in the previous screen. Any times appearing in red are values that are either incorrect or missing. You can fill them in or edit them by typing in the missing information or clicking the clocks next to the time value. There is an add button available in the top right hand corner of this window which will allow you to insert any missing timestamps. By clicking add we open the add time entries window where you can select the service, times, employee, type, and items associated with the new time value. Click the close button in the top right hand corner when finished to save your new time value. Also on the right hand side of each time value you will notice that there is a build and posted checkbox. If the build box is marked, that means that either iFleet or the office has marked these times as billable and they are on the invoice ready to go. If the posted box is checked, it means that this timestamp has been posted. It will be displayed here until all times including unaccounted times for that day have been posted over to QuickBooks. To get started with posting, after we have carefully reviewed the times on our screen, you can post these times over to QuickBooks by selecting the date range you wish to post for and clicking the Post All button at the bottom right hand corner of the screen. If time tracking is set up correctly for these QuickBooks employees, times should be posted to their timesheet. Upon completion of successful posting, Smart Service will display this message to inform you. And as for posting and work orders, the previously named Enter Completed Work Orders screen has been renamed to Post Work Orders and will be available in the usual place in the office screen. Now, if your company has chosen custom terminology for work orders, you will see that terminology displayed after the word post in the same spot. This screen has also received a major redesign. The option to filter by a single employee or all employees is still available, and the date range options from the Post Time screen has also been added in here. Jobs may be viewed by either date completed, which is the date iFleet finalized the job, or by date scheduled, which would also include the Include Incomplete Jobs option. All options relating to the QuickBooks invoice have been grouped into this QuickBooks Options section. And a major change in here is that the Post Jobs to QuickBooks option has been replaced with the Do Not Post Jobs, which is unchecked by default. If this option is checked, None of the jobs posted will generate invoices in QuickBooks, and as with its predecessor, the global setting will affect all users. Another change for these options is how invoice dates are written to QuickBooks. In this drop-down, you have the option to choose the date completed or finalized date, the scheduled date, or a custom date of your choice. To review one of the jobs displayed, the blue hypertext has replaced the edit tool. By clicking here, you may open the job to review any notes, job items, or my job fields that have been added by the field user. If the information looks correct, you may save and close to return to the posting screen. Below the job name, any job exception added will be displayed in red. This will help relay messages to the office if additional actions are required to complete the service. Continuing to the right of the screen, new columns have been added to detail the scheduling information versus the timestamp information on this job. You can see when the job was scheduled versus when it was finalized by iFleet and the amount of time it was scheduled for versus the sum of all production values added to the job. Adjustments or additions to the times on this service can be made by clicking the hypertext time. When all jobs in view are ready to be posted to QuickBooks, you may click the post button on the right next to each job or use the post all feature at the bottom of the screen. And this concludes the list of major updates added for time tracking in version 99 of Smart Service. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please visit us at www.smartservice.com wiki. If you have any more questions or would like to schedule a training class to cover these new features with your office, you may reach us at 888-518-0818. Also, be sure to visit smartservice.com updates for more videos and articles about these new features.